<laughs> Hello and welcome to Trojans Live. Jordan Moore, Sean Cody, and a guy uh, back from our day at USC, <laughs> Old Guys Convention here. David Blue joins us now. Uh, you may know, know him or may have known him as David Bluthenthal back in the day when he was a uh, star baller at USC, but it is the 20th anniversary of the 2001 basketball run uh, to the Elite Eight, which uh, David was a part of. And, and we're hosting a, a really fun rewatch with David and Brandon Granville, Sam Clancy, Jeff Trapagne. That'll be tomorrow night, 7 o'clock Pacific time. You can watch it on uh, USC Hoops Twitter and uh, USC Athletics uh, Facebook and YouTube. So check that out. But uh, 20 years later, David, uh, what what stands out to you uh, for, for your, your memory of, the, of that magical run? You know what? I think, to be honest, it was more than even just the basketball. It was everything around the games. So the, and they don't have it this year, but the crowds yeah. and the hype. There and the NBA scouts. There's going to be some yeah, crowds okay. this year. Yeah. But you know, back when we were there, it was like you'd walk around the city or the hotel you were staying at and you're wearing your sweats and everybody knows who you are. And that's a big part of being a professional athlete is the recognition. And so the tournament is really the first chance for a young basketball player, you know, depending on how far you get to experience that at a high level. David, we know you had an extensive uh, European basketball book career, but what's, what's going on in life now, man? What are you up to these days? You know what? I Number one, I am, I'm, I'm a proud stay-at-home dad, and I spend a <laughs> lot of time with my uh, 12-year-old with daughter and 9-year-old son. They're not in school. They're at home. Somebody <laughs> has to wake them up, make them breakfast, make them lunch, yeah. make them snack. Turn that zoom on. You turn it off, get them outside, <laughs> make them run around take them to practice, do all that stuff. So I do that. I'm also a lifestyle coach. So I do help people sort of with their nutrition and physical fitness. And I, I spend a lot of time with mainly guys, just kind of helping them sort of um, overcome chronic pains and, and, and maximize their, you know, their life, you know. Man, I'm going to give you a call then. And yeah. Sean mentioned it. I don't know if Let's I ever asked you about, uh, yeah. about your, uh, your yeah, Sean, Sean and I are both. Sean and I just talk about our chronic pain all the time, so we might as well bring it professional. Yeah. Tell me about your, your pro career because uh, you really were, and, and I don't know this. I just, I guess, my impression always was that you were this sort of big star in in Israel hooping. Yeah. What's it like, sort of being a you know, big time basketball player, but in another country. Yeah, it's funny because I can walk around anywhere in L.A. and nobody knows who I am. But if I go to Tel Aviv or Israel, I'm like Kobe Bryant walking around the street <laughs> and everybody knows who I am. And even other places like in Europe and Italy and France and yeah. places like that. Um, you know, I, I, I think that as I look back on my career, I'm so grateful that I got to see the world. I got to travel now. You know, traveling is going to be so different now. And I got to experience for 11 years traveling all around Europe um, and seeing and, and I saw most of these cities and, and, and countries via the bus. So to the hotel, you know, to the airport, to the arena. So it wasn't like I got to go to a lot of museums and tourist spots, but at least I got to uh, feel the, the, the cultures and experience the yep. food. So that's a huge part of a great memory for me in my career and something that really stands out was the traveling I got to do and experience other parts of the world. David, I, I used to fancy myself a basketball player back in the day. And my dad would drag me out to high school basketball games when I was a young guy and we would go watch Westchester, man. That was the pinnacle of high school basketball at the time, man. I remember you and Granville out there, classic battles with Jason Capono and Artesia, man. Mm. Some, just some great games, man. But take us, take us back to some of those memories of high school basketball in Southern California in that era. Yeah, you know, that was kind of the beginning of AAU. So that's yeah. kind of the beginning of when Nike and Adidas started to pump the high schools with gear. And I remember I always wanted more shoes and sweatsuits. And, you know, <laughs> that was such a big deal for us back then, like 13 year old, 14 year olds. We wanted the latest Jordan sweats. And I remember, you know, going to these different AAU tournaments and it was like, you would just get gear and it was fantastic. And the better you were, the more gear you got. And, you know, I just, I, you know, I, my dad, he would always say, you don't need to take all that gear. I'll just buy you some gear. So, <laughs> I, you know, I never got as much as other guys did, but I do remember that I was that level player 
where those teams and those, you know, organizations would say, hey, we, we want you to be on our team, you know, and, and I remember how, how much fun it was to be an athlete growing up, mostly playing street ball from age six to seven and then eight, nine, and then now starting AAU and saying, wow, okay, so, you know, now I'm getting into organized basketball with these, you know, play, after playing so much street ball and, and I was good. And so I remember just how much fun it was to, to go into that time of my life with so much confidence playing well. Let me get you out on this one, David. What do you think? I mean, not so much, you know, this this team, but what what do you think it'll take? What what does it take to to make a run? Twenty years later, it feels like you know it's a really good USC basketball team, same seed as you guys had, a six seed, a kind of a similar draw. To me, it feels you know like a manageable draw. So so what's the key? What should they be thinking about to to be able to make that run? Yeah, I always say, and we learned this in college, and I learned this in high school and certainly in the pros, when you get to the postseason, it's all about execution in the half court. Um, nobody's going to give up fast break points. So even though you can try and push the tempo, usually these games are going to come down to the last five minutes. And yeah. that's where you got to run your set. you got to set good screens. you got to make your passes crisp. And you got to have good – half court defense and offense and execute you can't turn the ball over you can't give up offensive rebounds you got to control possessions the teams that are the most successful in the postseason they 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 control the possession so they limit the turnovers they win the rebound battle um and they play great uh field goal percentage defense so i think those are going to be the keys for usc is you know great defensive field goal you know defense against the field goal yep. percentage rebounding and um don't turn the ball over and make free and throws make, and make you were good at making free throws and make make free shots. throws this this time yeah. of year there's always a march hero 20 <laughs> years it. ago it, it was david blue for usc 27 <laughs> points on six of nine from three against kentucky in the sweet 16 uh so check out that that rewatch tomorrow i think you'll enjoy it the guys had yeah. a lot of fun watching the game none of them had watched it uh <laughs> since it happened so uh so check that out again seven o'clock tomorrow on the, on the usc hoops twitter and the usc athletics facebook and youtube thanks david for participating in that and thanks for for catching up with us we know you'll be watching this week